the risks that are associated with lone working and isolation are that those people that already have existing mental health issues, that those conditions will be exacerbated by being more isolated than normal, by not having the day-to-day -day connection and interaction with other people. And there's also a risk that for people that have never experienced mental health issues before, that they might start to experience issues for the first time. So, you know, it's being aware that that, that might be the case for yourself and also for, for the people around you. I think there are lots of things that we can all do to help to combat the feelings of isolation and loneliness that we might all be experiencing during this time. So, you know, for me, one of the things that I've learned is that as human beings, we're just, we're hardwired to seek connection. We're hardwired to want to experience feelings of connection with other people. So, you know, one way to combat those feelings of, um, of kind of fear and isolation and loneliness is, is just to make sure that we're getting the opportunity one way or another to, to have to have that connection with other people and also to feel that connection with ourselves as well. I think when we are struggling, when we're experiencing difficult times, you can lose that sense of connection to yourself as well. So I think that mindfulness, yoga, um, practicing meditations and you know, guided meditations, that kind of thing, I think can be a really, really good way of just getting back into connection with yourself and how you are feeling. So I was thinking about how you can help a friend or a colleague that might be struggling with feelings of isolation or loneliness. It's really just having an awareness on, you know, what other people might be experiencing and how just the, the simple act of picking the phone up and having a five minute conversation with somebody actually could really change the day for them.